Charlie, could you help mom with repairs at the cottage? She has a leak in the roof and dad's on a business trip. My wife looked at me with pleading eyes. At that moment, I didn't even think of refusing. Mother-in-law Laura had always treated me well, and the cottage was just an hour's drive away. What could go wrong? Of course, no problem. Saturday's free anyway. The thermometer showed 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Sweat ran down my back as I patched the roof. Laura kept coming up to check on me, bringing cold beer. You're my savior, she smiled, offering another bottle. Sarah married so well. By evening, the roof was fixed, but a storm was coming. Laura insisted I stay. How can you drive in this weather? Besides, you've had quite a bit to drink. She was right. My head was already pleasantly spinning. I called Sarah. Honey, I'll stay at the cottage overnight. There's a storm. Of course, dear. Thanks for helping, Mom. We sat on the veranda, listening to the rain. Bottles emptied one after another. Laura told stories about her youth, laughed, and I suddenly noticed how beautiful she was. At 45, she looked 35 at most. You know, she moved closer. I always thought Sarah was too strict with you. In what way? I felt her hand rest on my knee. Well, she's so proper, like I was at her age. Then I realized life's too short for rules. Her lips were so close. Beer clouded my judgment. Somewhere on the edge of consciousness, a thought screamed, don't. But alcohol and summer heat had done their work. I don't remember who leaned in first. I only remember the heat of her body, the scent of her perfume, and my own racing heartbeat. Everything merged into some mad kaleidoscope. I woke up to the sound of a fallen pan in the kitchen. My head was splitting. I lay on the living room couch covered with a blanket. My clothes were scattered nearby. Good morning. Laura's voice sounded ordinary, as if nothing had happened. Want coffee? I sat in the kitchen staring into my cup, unable to raise my eyes. A heavy silence hung between us. Charlie, she finally said. Let's agree, this never happened. Yes, of course. I gratefully grabbed onto this thought. Just had too much to drink. Exactly, nothing happened, and no one will ever know. Leaving, I almost convinced myself it was just a dream. A nightmare, but the hickey on my neck, which I discovered at home in the bathroom, was quite real. Father-in-law returned from his business trip a week later. Sarah insisted on a family dinner. Honey, you seem tense, my wife said as we drove to her parents. Is everything okay? Yes, just tired from work. Laura opened the door. She was wearing the same dress as that evening. My mouth instantly went dry. The kids are here, she called into the house. John, my father-in-law, came out of his study with a broad smile. There's my favorite son-in-law. Laura told me how you helped with the roof. Well done. I felt myself blushing. It was nothing special. During dinner, I tried to look only at my plate, but I still caught Laura's glances. She sat across from me, and every time our eyes met, everything inside me turned upside down. Charlie's barely eating, Sarah noticed. Mom, is your lasagna not as good today? Oh, I'm sure Charlie appreciated my culinary talents. Laura said it so ambiguously that I choked on my wine. You okay, son? John patted my back. Yes, just went down the wrong way. After dinner, Sarah helped her mother with dishes, while my father-in-law dragged me to his study to have a drink. You know, he said, pouring whiskey, I'm so glad you became part of our family. Sarah's happy. Laura adores you. I choked on the whiskey. Really? Of course. She's always saying how caring and attentive you are. At that moment, Laura peeked into the study. Boys, want to join us? We're going to look at vacation photos. Of course, dear. John stood up. Coming, Charlie? I, I need to use the bathroom. In the bathroom, I stared at my reflection for a long time. What's happening to me? Why does every time she's near, I feel hot and cold? Coming out of the bathroom, I ran into Laura in the hallway. She pressed a finger to her lips and slipped a note into my pocket. All evening, I felt that paper burning in my pocket. I only read it at home, locked in the garage. Can't stop thinking about that night. You? I tore the note into tiny pieces and flushed it down the toilet but her words kept echoing in my head. Honey, are you coming to bed? Sarah called from the bedroom. Yes, coming. I lay down next to my wife, feeling like the ultimate scoundrel. She snuggled against me, so dear, so loved. I hugged her, trying to drive away unwanted memories of another woman. The phone quietly vibrated. Message from Laura. Good night, sweetie. Thinking of you. I blocked her number, but we both knew this wouldn't solve the problem. Honey, Mom's asking if you can come fix her computer, Sarah handed me the phone. Something's wrong with her internet again. I went cold.
Maybe we should call a specialist. You said yourself it was elementary. Besides, they've done so much for us. There was no way out. An hour later, I stood before their house, gathering my courage. Oh, Charlie! Laura opened the door wearing a short house robe. John's at golf and Sarah said you'd help with the computer. Let's get started quickly. I tried not to look at her. The computer was in John's study. While I worked on the settings, Laura kept leaning over my shoulder, supposedly to see the screen better. Her perfume was driving me crazy. You know, she whispered in my ear, I often think about that night at the cottage. Laura, please, I moved away. We agreed. Yes, of course, she smiled innocently. Want coffee? In the kitchen, she accidentally spilled sugar and bent to pick it up right in front of me. I rushed out, mumbling something about urgent business. That evening, a message came from an unknown number. You ran away so fast. I'll buy a new robe, specially for you. A week later, at the family barbecue, Laura constantly found reasons to touch me. Either wiping a non-existent stain from my shirt or asking for help carrying plates, deliberately brushing against me. Charlie, you're so jumpy, Sarah noticed. And why don't you hug mom anymore when greeting her? Just don't want to seem pushy. Nonsense, we're family, Laura smirked. Yes, Charlie, we're a very close family. John raised his glass. To family. I looked at him, a kind, naive man who's so proud of his family. I felt sick. Excuse me, I stood up from the table. I'm not feeling well. In the bathroom, I splashed cold water on my face. The phone vibrated. New message from another unknown number. This Sunday, John's going fishing. Sarah's at a conference, and I'll be all alone. Stop it, I wrote back. Or what? You'll tell everyone how you moaned my name that night? My hands started shaking. Someone knocked on the door. Honey, are you okay? Sarah's voice. Yes, coming out. In the mirror, a hunted, frightened man looked back at me. I didn't recognize myself. I started drinking. Not heavily, but enough for Sarah to notice. Honey, what's going on? You've opened whiskey three evenings in a row. Tough period at work. It's not just that. You're avoiding my parents snapping when I talk about them. I took a big gulp. I just want to be alone with you without outsiders. Outsiders? This is my family, Charlie. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Sarah sat next to me. Talk to me. Did something happen with Dad or with Mom? I flinched at the mention of Laura. Sarah noticed. What happened between you two? Did you fight? No, no, everything's, everything's fine. Then why do you twitch every time I mention her? Why did you delete her from your contacts? I just, I can't explain. You know what? Sarah stood up. When you decide to start telling the truth, let me know. Until then, you can sleep on the couch. At night, a message came. Fighting with the wifey? I know a great way to relieve stress. I drank more. The next day, John invited me to lunch. I need to talk, son. We sat in a steakhouse, and I was afraid to look up. Does he know? Did Laura tell? Sarah says you have a drinking problem. I exhaled. No, not at all. Just stress. And problems with Laura. My fork clinked against the plate. Listen, John put his hand on my shoulder. I know she can be pushy, likes to be the center of attention, but she's a good person. Yes, of course, my voice trembled. Whatever happened between you, resolve it, for Sarah's sake. That evening, I drove to Laura's. Had to end this. She opened the door in that same robe. Finally, she purred. I knew you'd come. Stop this! My voice sounded harsher than I intended. Stop the messages, the hints, all of it! Or what? She came closer. You'll tell John, break Sarah's heart. You're her mother, how can you? And you're her husband, but that didn't stop you from sleeping with me at the cottage. I grabbed her shoulders. That was a mistake. Really? She pressed against me. Then why do you still tremble when I'm near? Her lips were an inch from mine. The familiar scent of perfume hit my head. At that moment, the front door slammed. Mom, are you home? We jumped apart. Sarah walked into the hallway. Charlie, what are you doing here? Sarah looked from me to her mother. I... My mouth went dry. Honey, Charlie came to talk. Laura adjusted her robe. About your fight. At seven in the evening, when Dad's not home? Sarah, this isn't what you... What I think. She crossed her arms. What should I think when I find my husband alone with my mother, who's somehow in a robe? Dear, Laura stepped toward her daughter. You're overreacting. Really, Mom? Then explain to me. Both of you explain. I stared at the floor, unable to utter a word. A heavy silence hung between us. You know what? Sarah laughed nervously. I don't even want to know, Charlie. Pack your things. You can stay with your mommy. Sarah, wait. Laura grabbed her daughter's arm. Let's talk. About what, Mom? 
about how you've been flirting with my husband for months? Think I'm blind? I just, just what? Decided to test how strong our marriage is. It's my fault. The words came out on their own. Both women turned to me. At the cottage, when I was fixing the roof, we drank and... Charlie, don't, Laura whispered. I have to. I looked Sarah in the eyes. I slept with your mother. A slap burned my face, then another from Laura. How dare you, she screamed. I asked you to keep quiet. So it's true, Sarah sank onto the couch. God, it's true. Honey, I didn't mean to. It just happened. Shut up, Sarah jumped up. Just shut up. You, you're my mother, and you... She turned to me. Get out. Both of you get out. Sarah, please. I said get out. The front door slammed again. John stood in the doorway with his golf clubs. What's going on here? Why is everyone shouting? We froze. Sarah burst into tears. Dad, they, they... Did someone die? John joked, not understanding the situation. Sarah looked at her mother. Tell him or I will. Laura went pale. John, dear, your wife is sleeping with your son-in-law. Sarah blurted out and immediately covered her mouth, as if not believing she'd said it. John dropped his clubs. The metal clang against the floor sounded like a gunshot. What? He looked from me to Laura. Is this some kind of joke? Dad, Sarah went to him. I'm sorry. Shut up! He raised his voice at his daughter for the first time in his life. Laura, is this true? It was just once, she whispered, at the cottage. His fist slammed me into the wall. For a 60-year-old man, John had an excellent right hook. You, he grabbed my shirt. I loved you like a son. John, stop! Laura tried to pull her husband away. It's my fault! Of course it's your fault! He pushed her away. Traitor! Don't you dare! I hit my father-in-law in the jaw. We rolled on the floor. The women were screaming. Blood appeared from somewhere. I'm calling the police! Sarah shouted. We froze. John breathed heavily, pinning me to the floor. Get out of my house and don't dare come near my family. Oh, this is my family too, I choked out. Not anymore. I stood up, wiping blood from my split lip. Looked at Sarah. She was crying, pressed against the wall. At Laura, she avoided my gaze. Sorry, I said, not knowing who I was addressing. Walked out into the damp night, got in my car. In the rearview mirror, I saw Sarah run onto the porch. Charlie! I started the engine. Wait! I hit the gas. The phone was blowing up with calls. Laura, Sarah, even John. I turned it off. Three days I lived in a motel, keeping the phone off. On the fourth day, I went to our house with Sarah to get my things. On the kitchen table lay a note. I haven't forgiven, but I want to understand. Call when you're ready to talk. Next to it, a bottle of the same beer Laura and I drank at the cottage. I crumpled the note, grabbed the bottle, and threw it against the wall. The pieces shattered like our life. The phone lay in my pocket, so heavy, so light. I took it out, turned it on. My finger hovered over the call button. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.